I'm Joanne Banco, author, designer, and sewing educator. And as a sewing enthusiast, I love to make the most of my machines. I also love to customize garments and make things that suit me just right. I'm sure you probably feel the same way. So today, I'd like to show you how to make your own custom boho style broomstick skirt using the serger and the sewing machine in combination. You're going to find that the serger gives you efficiency and speed and the sewing machine gives you precision. So let's get started. We're going to make a little miniature version today. I'm going to go over by the uh, serger here and I'm going to show you some very important settings that we need to tweak. Um, when we want to do gathering for these um, multiple tiers on this skirt, we're going to set up the serger to do it very, very quickly for us. And we're going to do that by changing a few dials on the serger. When I set up a serger to do gathering, I'm going to look for three important things. And that is, number one, I'm going to set the stitch length to the longest length I can get. Then I'm going to set the differential feed dial to the highest number I can get. And last but not least, I'm going to change my needle tension dial. I've got just one needle set in this machine right now set for a three thread stitch. And I'm going to set that for a very high tight tension. What that's going to do for me is give me the most gathers possible all in that um, little bit of space where I want that to gather up the fabric. So I can adjust any one of those and make those a little bit less, but you're going to see in just a minute how that helps me to give the maximum setting. So let me swing my chair over to the serger and get in position here. And I've got the first tier from my, um, from my layers. We're going to have three tiers. I'm going to have all the instructions for you for customizing this um, available on the website so you can make your own custom skirt. So let's start by gathering this strip. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make a really long tail. And I'm doing this because I need to be able to lessen that gather if need be. And you'll see in just a minute how that's going to do that for me. Now remember I said I want maximum gathers. Let me tell you why. If I have maximum, I can always ease off a few. If I have minimum or not quite what I need, it's a little harder for me to get that gathered back up. So let's go for maximum at first. And I can get maximum in another way by just gently holding my finger behind the serger and letting those stitches kind of build up on one another. At the end, I'm going to roll that out again to a good long tail. Grab my scissors here and clip this thread. Now, let me show you why I needed that. If I wanted to pull that slightly out, that's going to allow me to do that. Now that we've got the gathered edge done, let me show you how to serge finish the opposite edge. That's going to be the edge that we're going to sew our gathered edge to on each strip. So we're going to go back to the machine. We're going to change back to a standard stitch length, which is highlighted right here. We're going to change to a one on the differential feed. And let me take just a second to tell you a little bit about differential feed. Differential feed on a serger controls the speed of the feed dogs. And when we increase the number, we increase the speed. When we increase the speed, it pushes the fabric in and basically just pushes those nice little neat gathers together. When we want to serge finish a standard edge, we want it just set at a one, which basically makes those feed dogs just run perfectly smooth and perfectly even. So I'm going to twirl back over to the machine here, and I'm just going to change my um, needle tension back to standard and serge finish right along this edge. We're clean finishing this edge so that we'll have no ravels on any of the fabric areas when we're done. The um, edge that has the serger stitching for the gathers is all finished, and now our opposite edge is all gathered too. Nice and neat and even. Now we can head over to the sewing machine and we can sew those two layers together and complete the tiers of our skirt. We're going to do that with each piece, all three tiers for the front and the back, and then it'll be a simple matter of sewing those side seams together to finish it up. 
So let's get that stitch selected, okay? And now that we've got that stitch selected, I wanted you to take a look and see that I've already gathered all three of those tiers. So the very bottom is gonna be our hem. We don't need to finish that at all because we're gonna actually turn that up as a regular hem. All right, so I've got these other two strips that would normally be gathered. Those I've already finished. And I've got my straight stitch selected, normal, standard, ordinary stitch length. But here's what I want you to see. When I go to put these two layers together, I'm gonna match centers. That's a very easy way to um, place two layers together. I just find the center of each strip, center of my gathered strip, center of my straight strip. I could pin all along those edges. And let me teach you another little trick here. Once we've adjusted those gathers with our serger, if you just take that thread and wrap it around your finger, make a little slip knot, look what happens. That keeps those serger threads from scooting off there any further. So it maintains that perfect gathered length that I've achieved to sew to my next strip. Okay, so I've got this just underneath the presser foot. And you know, a serger in its um, normal stitch makes about a stitch about a quarter of an inch wide. That makes it great for lots of things. You could do piecework. You could use this technique for, um, you know, sewing many different types of, of layers together and for gathering items for many types of things. But when we do that, we, we don't want to have to, um, you know, fool around about where exactly that stitch is going to form. We want it to start just to the left of the serger stitch. So my needle in its normal position is too far over. I'm just gonna go right over to my screen and I'm gonna touch the plus button and watch that needle move. I can even turn on this little laser beam here and see exactly what position I need that to be in. Move that right over so it's just to the left side of my serger stitching and then move my needle over to match. Perfect match on the screen, perfect match on my fabric. Now it's a simple matter of stitching along this edge and just running the presser foot along the raw edge, okay? Match that up. Now I want you to know a couple things. First of all, this is a really fun skirt to make. Once you get your measurements, you get your pieces cut, you can make this very easily in an afternoon. And with the instructions that we're gonna have for you as a download on the website, you can make it at any size you like, any length you like, even for children's sizes. Clip this thread, raise my presser foot, and there you see. Look how nice and even those gathers are. If you remember when I started, I said, I really like to use my sewing machine and my serger in combination. This is an ideal setup here where you could swing from one to another. But you know, the serger does certain things very differently from a sewing machine. So when you learn all the ins and outs of each, you learn to combine them both and you get the best, both, uh, best of both worlds, really, when you combine your serger and your sewing machine. I've got the speed of gathers and I've got the accuracy of sewing that perfect seam. So I would make two of these. Obviously I'd make it a little tiny little mini version here for you today. This is about a quarter size of what a standard normal normal size would be. And once I'm finished with all of my gathering, all of my stitching, I'll have a front, I'll have a back, I'll sew the front and back right sides together. I'll make a simple double turned quarter inch hem for the bottom, and then all I need to do is finish my waist. Once again, you visit the website, you'll find instructions for a waistline treatment in an elastic version and another um, version that's a little bit more tailored. I've got some ideas for, for both of those for you. So let's just take one more look at this um, skirt, and you can see that the tiers are all gathered one to another, and you can also see that the hem is done. And what you really need to think about when you're gonna make a skirt like this is two things. First of all, where did all the wrinkles come from? Well, this is actually called a broomstick skirt. And where it got its name was from the original way this skirt was 
wrinkled and crinkled was the tears would be sewn, normal gathering like you saw me do, would look like a normal, almost like a prairie style skirt. But when you're finished, while the skirt's still wet after laundering, you lay it flat on a table, you scrunch it all up, and you would tie it to a broomstick in the olden days. Today we've got much easier methods. Once again, you'll find that in the website instructions, but I like to use just a, a leg of hosiery and then use another leg to tie around and wrap it. I'll just give you one little tip. It does take a little while to dry, so think about that. If you're gonna make it in an afternoon, that's no problem, but you're not gonna wear it that same night if you're gonna wrinkle it, because it's gonna take just a little bit of time to dry. But one of the wonderful things about this is that you can change the, the tiers, you can change the length, you can make more tiers, you can make less tiers, you can make this skirt longer, shorter, it's all up to you. Customize it whatever way you want, and once you learn to use your sewing machine and serger in combination, it'll be quick work to make your own beautiful customized broomstick skirt.